guys. How are you all today? <laughs> I was trying to get some stuff done <laughs> and I lost track of time. Hopefully my internet connection is good because I didn't have time to restart between. And so I've got a lot of stuff open on my desktop, which I didn't mean to have doing. So welcome. Sorry I didn't see you all last week, but it was a good week with brother. Enjoyed it. Um, you all had lots of questions this week. So you've got me working hard today. Um, Karen, which software are you using with a spiral font? I, um, BES or something else? Give me a heads up on that one. So there were some questions today and I'm going to start with probably the easiest one. So Carolyn, you've got a calm before the storm today, huh? Y'all are about to get, are y'all going to get ice? We have, they're talking about an ice storm on the backside of our rains tomorrow. So I don't know. Um, we're, they're not saying we're going to get the ice until maybe Thursday afternoon. I got to cross my legs, guys. Sorry, I can't sit still on a, a chair. So, um, just, yeah, the weather has been nuts, but it is a lovely 63 degrees and breezy today, which is wonderful here in Tennessee. I, I, you got to love it when we get pretty weather in the winter. So you know, yesterday was 50 something. So, and today is wonderful. So hi guys, thanks for rolling in with me today. Carolyn, you've got a winter advisory. Yes, by Thursday. I, I think that's going to go all the way up the coast again. Um, I got stuck in Atlanta for a while last week. So um, <clears throat> there were high winds there They and we couldn't take off. So it was kind of crazy. So yeah, it's great, isn't it, Patricia? Today is a really nice day. I can't say that I am... Sorry that I don't live in Michigan anymore, Cindy. <laughs> so um, there's a reason I moved south. Sharon, did you survive your three days of winter? <laughs> it was y'all. My um, stepmom was has her had her boots out, her coat out, was all bundled up, ready to go for joy. So she was. It was crazy there. <clears throat> ah, yes. I, I think the same thing here. I, I you know, this time of year, I kind of just, I, I'm looking forward to just having that lovely time with those in between warm ups and cool down. So I'm hope you're on a houseboat. Where are you, Edna? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, I was wondering if you and Melody made it, if you and Melody had survived the cold weather, just because, I mean, we were in Fort Lauderdale last week and it was I, well, a couple of days. I think it was in the seventies. I think it was 78 on Thursday, but um, when we got there, it was in the sixties, which was quite cool. So I'm um, looking forward to getting back into it. So, and I have been posting what we're going to do on brother. So's this month. Uh, uh, some of you all saw that last week. Oh, you're on Chickabogwa Lake. I actually, I actually know exactly where that is because I used to live in Chattanooga for a little while. So I've, I've lived all over. What can I say? Haven't lived out West yet and don't plan on it, but never say never. So, okay, guys, let's roll into it. Um, has anybody made the heart quilt though from Brother So's last week or last month, two weeks ago? I guess is when I did it. I saw some people playing with our software, which is always a good thing. I like to see your progress when, when you're playing with your software. And I've been actually playing with trying to take what I get out of advanced quilt design software and take it into the Luminaire and see what I can make as far as the quilting part goes this time. So you'll see a little bit of that maybe when, I, when we do the Brother Sews. All right. You haven't made your heart yet, but it's in your UFO pile. It's not a UFO pile. It's your projects yet to be gotten to <laughs> or those in progress. <laughs> not not UFOs. I, I would hate to say that. I've probably got a ton of UFOs. Um, all right, guys. So let's see here. What have we got? Let's start with, let me find my Word document over here so I can figure out what were my questions here. So, um, Deborah, let's start with yours. Deborah Wells sent in if the design, so she went back to the one that we were talking about organizational skills in design database transfer. 
and she wants to know if the design is in a zip file, should it be opened and transferred to move each separate design as an individual file, or can she move it and open it up in the software labor? Well, that depends on whether you want to view it in the software or not. If you're looking to be able to view designs in the design database transfer, the designs have to be unzipped. Otherwise, the software can't pick into zip folders. So if you want to be able to see your thumbnails and have them organized while you're viewing them in design database transfer, you do need to unzip the files. You can, it, I personally, if I'm not going to use all of the different file formats, I will take those, zip them back up because you do have that on a Windows computer, the capability of zipping files back up. And I will put those in a different location, maybe on an external drive, but for the, your PES files, if you want to be able to see them in design database transfer, you do need to unzip those. So let's see here. Um, what is my recommendation for putting other language? Well, that's the same thing. So if you're, if you're not going to use the PES file, anything besides PES, then I would zip those up and put them someplace else. It's not going to clutter up your software. It basically clutters up your computer. So it depends on what you want to do and how you operate. Um, your next question, is there a separate design database for cut files? No, we do not have that capability. However, what I would tell you is that on Windows Explorer, um, your Windows file viewer, you can see thumbnails of your, let me share. Let me share a screen. We'll share screen two and I'll pop up my Windows Explorer over there. So if I am looking here and I look at my icon, so you can see these are FCM files. I changed, oops, hold on. I changed my view to extra large icons. And you can see that I, you have my, P, these are my FCM files right here. So you can actually view your FCM files directly on Windows Explorer or File Explorer. So just keep that in mind. You don't necessarily need a separate program to do that with, um, if, you've, if you have downloaded, what am I trying to say, Canvas Workspace for your desktop and installed it, you should be able to see those FCM files. All right, what was my next question here? And uh, do, we are not really, so the next question was, are we releasing anything for February for Brother Sews for National Embroidery Month? As far as I know, there's not a new, process, a new machine or anything like that that they are releasing. I will tell you that they did release a new um, scan cut machine to Amazon and to Brother Sews. And it is a um, Disney model. And it does read PES, PHC, and PHX files. So hold on a second, and I will put you, I meant to get this earlier. I'll put you a link in there for that. Because I do have an Amazon where I, it's 230DI, and it is stinking cute. I will tell you that. Let me see if I can't find it for you. Where'd it go? Well, I'd be darned. Hold on. I guess I had to put the brother part in there. Huh. It's not showing up for me today. I'll plop it in there later. But it is it is very cute. It's called the 230DI. There it is. Okay. So let me get a link for that. If you guys are interested and I'm going to show you what this looks like. This one, this one is very, very cute. I got to find where I am. Here we are. So yes, it is red and it is stinking cute. Um, let me, let me share that screen. Come back over. Let's plop this over to the other side. Um, so, but I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do have some other I, I do get a little skin off that game, but you you don't pay any more for it because I do. Oh, it's not letting me it's not letting me put it in there. Why not? There we go. Um, 
so just just so you know that this one is cute um it is so disney fied it's not even funny they they did it i love the cosmetic of this one i think it's a really really cute one so um anyhow that gives you an idea of what that one is it is super quick cute hi gracie I, yeah abuela i spoke to gracie earlier today hopefully you figured out what that upgrade what issue was um, so we have a print to cut. It is, um, done with the Adobe Illustrator plugin. So you would need Illustrator to do that. Honestly, it does a really good job if you print something out and you scan it back in and you just do the direct cut. I don't know that you necessarily need the print to cut feature because it does a very nice job of that one. If you have, if you have the sticker kit, this is, this is one of those unusual things. If you have the sticker kit, you can create a PDF file on Canvas Workspace on the web, which allows you to then print that PDF file. So it really depends on what kits that you have. I'll show you what that one looks like. Let me pop this over to the other side and go to Canvas Workspace. Online. So here we go. <clears throat> so the sticker kit is this one right here, the printable sticker function. So you see where my cursor's bouncing right there. So if I choose new, and even if I don't use the sticker project, let's say I come in here and I do something basic. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to plop something in there just so you can see, and we'll put um, a stamp in the middle of it, just so you can see how this works. <clears throat> so let's say I want to print that out. If I go into my premium functions and see this little printable sticker, there's this little PDF function right there. When I touch that, it will generate a PDF for me. When I open that up, uh, I'm just going to save it here, uh, sticker. So we know what it is. Then I can click on it when it downloads. There it is. It's ready to print. So it really depends on what you have. So you can do it. It just depends on whether you have the printable sticker kit. I can't do that from my desktop, but I can do that from Canvas Workspace on the web. So you know, some functionalities are not the same, and that's one that's not the same. Just like layers are not in the web version, they're on the desktop version. So it gives you that capability of doing something a little different. So just kind of keep that number. Um, yes, Cindy, in general, the bigger the number, the more powerful it is. It has more features to it. So um, the most the most the ones with the most features in them currently are the 325 the sdx 325 and the sdx 330d those two are the dealer models they are the highest end that we have those two include the my connection feature that connects up to illuminaire now you've heard me say that i expect that to be expanded at some point to other machines that have my design center in it but currently the only one that it speaks to is the luminaire so if you have a machine that has um the that if you have a luminaire or have a machine that has the um my design center in it you might consider one of those two models instead otherwise the basic machine itself is gen in general for all intents and purposes they all do the same things okay the difference between the dealer models and most of the other models anything besides that 230 di that i just showed showed you is that the non-dealer models do not read pes phc or phx so that's that's really an important note to remember so if you like to go directly to your scanning cut with a pes file then you need to buy a dealer model or that one that i just showed you now the SDX 85s, and I've had a lot of questions about this one. Somebody asked that recently, that SDX 85, and, and Margaret, I'm so glad you're you're enjoying that. I, I love the new My Connection feature too. It is the bomb. Um, what was I saying? 
So really the SDX 85 has the least amount of stuff included in it. It's the fewest patterns of any of the ones out there. So if you are really looking for built-in content an 85 is not your go-to machine, it's going to have less in the box with it. I don't have everything that it comes with because that's not a dealer model. And I'm generally looking at dealer models. It, having said that, you can use every accessory, the rotary auto blade, all of the accessories you can add on to it. You just can't add internal patterns to it. So it's not going to have as many features to it. And it's not going to read the PES, PHC, and PHX. Same thing with the 125s that you see out there online. And really a big, big part of the whole dealer thing is that you have somebody to teach you how to use your machine at your dealer. So that, I mean, that's really an important part of this whole thing. That's one of the reasons that I support the dealer industry so, so greatly is because that's where we go to get our stuff. Those are who we go to get our questions answered. If I have a problem with my machine, I don't want to have to send it back to the company. I want to be able to take it to somebody and say, here, I screwed up or something's wrong. Help me figure out what it is. Can you fix it for me? And that's where our dealers come in. They do take care of that, necess that necessary need that we have to get things fixed. So that's one of the things that I'll say is that I personally am a dealer model person because I like to know that I have somebody that can fix what's broken. So, um, <laughs> Well, there is, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, our hope is that eventually all dealers will have classes, you know, and if you're one of those that don't, then I understand exactly where you're coming from. I, um, there's nothing more frustrating than buying and you don't have support. So, but we do have some extremely good dealers out there. So if you have one locally that is extremely good, that's where I would purchase my machines from. Um, having said that, if you have one locally that's not any good, then I understand where you're coming from. So it, you, they're, they're, they're good and bad everything. They are independents. They mostly are family owned businesses and they are supporting their families with this. They're not big corporations. They don't work for brother. So brother can't, I mean, they can control certain things, but not all things. So, you know, we're, we're we, we try to support them because they, I mean, that's where a large portion of our business comes from. So, um, oh, wow, Paul, I, I'm not looking for, I'm glad I don't live there. <laughs> is all I say. <laughs> and, and I love to see that, Sherry, that, that really, that's, that's wonderful because we like to know that we have dealers out there that are doing very well. So, um, you know, it, it really was great. It's great when we have people that support. So, and yes, brother does support you that, I mean, we do have some, we had to have some great customer service representatives. Uh, yes. So, you know, it's, you know, everybody has different experiences and I'm not going to harp on that all day. <laughs> so, Okay, but I do love that you love your dealers. I, I love to see when you have a dealer that you love and you go to them. You know, I've got some of, I've got, I know some dealers that are on the 1-800-CALL-ME list. If you can't come to them, they'll do a FaceTime with you. So, you know, it really, it just depends. So, um, and yes, Shirley, there you go. Because when you get that, when you get the information that you need, you can make those machines sing. And that's what it's off. That's what it's all about. And being able to make what you have sing. Now, having said that, not every dealer can learn every machine. I mean, there's, they're only one person and it's, there's a lot to remember and try to run a business. So, I, you know, that's where we come in. That's where your ambassadors and your educators come in. We come in and teach, you know, try to explain different things. So, um, we try to fill that that need, especially when it comes to software, because not everybody is a software geek. And I'll raise my hand. Yes, I'm Cindy and I'm a software collector and I'm a software geek. Um, I love software because it intrigues me and I, it it helps you understand how your machines. The princess just came in the room. It helps you understand how your machines operate 
and how to digitize when you watch your machine embroider. So, which is kind of cool, which is what got me intrigued with it. Actually, <clears throat> I wanted to be able to do my own thing and that's, that's how I started it. So, all right, let's see here. Yes, you can do that in PE Design 11 for sure. I'll show you how here in a minute. Okay, so let me start with the first question and then we will go and circle back around to others that ha that are out there. So I'm gonna start with my software here. The first question was, let me get out of this. And let's open up <coughs> PE Design. So this one was kind of, I'm going to open up a new session because I want to leave this window up for you guys to see because we're going to, I'm going to show that in a little bit here. Uh, Rhonda, I have no clue about Hatch software. I am a brother person totally. Um, so that's where I spend my time. Okay. <clears throat> um, so there are others that I work with, but Hatch is not one of those. And let's see here. I'm going to switch to a different hoop. Actually, let me open up that design from my email here. <clears throat> and this is one. The question was, where could she do this process easier? Okay. She wants the black of this to be an applique and the blue to be an applique. I'm assuming she wants the accents to stay. And if that's the case, I have a workaround for you. Um, it would be easier to do this on the, in the software than on the machine with my connection because she has both. And the reason I say that is because the black outline here is the same. If you look over here, it's the same segment as the, the base of that hat. So here's what I would do. The first thing I would do is I would divide the design by colors. This breaks it up into color segments, so you're not having to deal with everything at one time. Then I clicked off the design, and I'm going to click on piece number five and click my select patterns icon here and use my split stitches tool because I want to separate my blacks. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to click around that area. I don't want to get in the black of the hat itself. I'm just trying to get the black accents out of there. And now you'll notice if you look over here in my sewing order window, I have the base of the hat and I have the top of the hat, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to come and grab this piece right here and select it with the select patterns icon. And I'm going to convert that to an outline. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it has an outline that I can deal with. And then I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to come see these little dash lines. And if you don't see your dash lines, you need to go into your zoom area and take off hide objects, not stitched. If it's orange, it's on and you won't see them. I don't want to see that. I want to see mine. So there's my little dash lines. Those are areas that are not stitched. I'm going to choose the select patterns icon and I'm going to delete those. So now you'll notice I have one solid black piece, which is exactly what I want in order to make that applique. So I've got that piece selected. I'm going to click my select patterns icon and it's just got my black piece. Go to my home home tab and choose my applique wizard. Then you can choose you want to choose replace because you want it to replace it. You can choose whatever kind of covering stitch you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with a zigzag and you can pick whatever size um, width you want. I don't go below 2.5 because it generally does not catch your fabric as well. So 2.5 is pretty much my minimum and you can choose how dense that you want it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and it's generated that applique for me. So let's do the th same thing for the blue. And I did it in this order because I wanted you can change it, but I followed the sewing order. The black went last, so I, that's the way I did it. So I'm going to do one more time. We're going to click on piece number four, click our select patterns icon, and we're going to convert it to an outline. We're going to convert whole to an outline. And you'll notice once again, I have a little, that little shield there. So I'm going to go ahead and double, you can double click it, or you can click it and click the select patterns icon move my cursor in and press delete. So now that hole is gone. 
So we want to click piece number four again, click the select patterns icon. And what are we going to do? We are going to go to home and touch our applique wizard again. We're replacing once again, the same settings that you had before will be applied here. Now, that shows me that I don't really want that those black accents, do I? Because they're going to stitch over my applique piece. Now, you can if you want, but I probably wouldn't, which tells me that I want to grab piece number 10, click my select patterns icon, and that split stitches tool again. If I come in here and I go around this area to get rid of my black, you'll notice I'm just going to go around I want that shield to still be in there so I can double click and then I can press delete and get rid of that. And now I'm left with my number two there and that's awesome. So what do I need to do next? Well, I'm going to have, if we look at this in realistic view, oops, that's solid. Here's realistic. I'm going to have a big hump right here and that's not optimal. So let's go back into stitch view and I may need to fix my little corner over here which is probably something I need to do before I convert that to applique. So let's undo a few times here and let's see what's going on with that little blue section. Do you see that little wiggle wobble there? Let me see if I can show it to you in a solid view. See that, that line right there? That's what was making that mess. So if I delete that point and then go back in and convert that to applique. So let's go back and select it again and convert it again. That should take care of the mess that was there. Much better. I, I may want to work with that a little bit more, but that gives you the concept of what I was trying to do. Okay. So now I need to go back in and do that split stitches again. Let's zoom out and grab our split stitches tool. And get rid of our black. So I'm just simply clicking around to surround that black edge. And I, I, wanted, I want to make sure I leave my this piece right here in. And you notice there's something else going on there, though. Before I go further, let's look here. So you see that little dash, that little line right there? That's actually going to stitch. So let's click on our select tool and click our select point tool and click right on that line. Do you see those two little edit points right there? I'm going to highlight those and press delete on my keyboard. That is now gone. Same thing with this yellow. Let's see what we've got going on here. So we've got yellow going to yellow. We can cheat here and right mouse click here and say split at point. And then we can get rid of that line right here. So let's grab that edit point right there and delete it. We should be good and no longer have those little lines going across. Perfect. So now those two are separate separate sections and they're ready to go. The last thing we need to do is figure out where do we want to do this and what order do we want to do it in? Do I want the hat to go first? Probably so. And then the bill to go last. OK, so that means my hat covering stitch. I need to fix it. I don't want it to cover twice. So I'm going to come in here and grab that piece. Hit my select patterns icon. Let's change the color so you can see it. Let's change it to brown or a pink. I thought I was going for brown, but I'm not. And I'm going to turn it into stitch view so you can see what we're doing and go to the select point tool. Now, let's zoom in because we want to split this line. We're going to come in and grab this edit node right here and right mouse click and say split at point. Actually, we have to do something first. We do have to ungroup it. So let's ungroup. Where is ungroup? There it is. Ungroup. Okay, so now let's come grab that piece. Tool, split point. Right mouse click here, say split at point, go to the opposite side. And here I'm going to add a point and right mouse click and split at point. So now I should have an entire line hanging out down here by itself. We're going to grab the select patterns tool, grab this guy, select him again and move our cursor in and press delete. 
So now we can change this to black. And your hat is done. That's how I would do it. <clears throat> okay. So that one, a little bit more complicated than what you would think, but it's simply that overlapping section. You can't make an applique unless you have an enclosed space. So you have to get in there and do that. Um, but that's that's how I would personally do it. I'd probably change my hat to blue, but um, I thought I was doing brown and I ended up doing a pink or a red or something. Who knows? Um, okay, so let me ask some questions. <clears throat> If I had my choice, would I choose blue or BES4? Um, I would choose BES4. And you want to know why? Because I can upgrade it. There are power packs that can be added on that are just absolutely amazing. And you cannot do that with blue. It also has the wireless to a machine if you want it. Um, it but those power packs really make that a very powerful piece of software. And if it's not in your budget now, that's that's I understand that totally. But it you can add on to that instead of it being a stagnant piece of software. BES Blue does not have upgrades and is not going to get upgrades. And I know that. So that that's where my head is at. I would go for BES4 before Blue. The the base level is pretty much the same, with the exception of be, not being able to do wireless and not having the BES Cloud. What where where things change is the add-ons. So Power Pack 1, for instance, gave you wireless to your scan and cut machine. It gave you nap control. It gave you convert to runs and convert to decorative fills. And those are huge, huge add-ons. The Power Pack 2 was all about artwork, which gave you some much, some really cool capabilities that I'm going to show today. I'm going to use my Power Pack to um, create an all over and all over stippling design and it really is a very cool cool feature and then the power pack three is all about templates so it's templates design template designs that you can customize to make them the way you want them so you can add change the text you can substitute um elements it, it so it, i mean there's just a lot the lot that you can add on to that little bes program that is absolutely cool okay um, how can you save a design on a USB stick in um, BES4? Well, that one's pretty simple. So, Tracy, let's go over to our software and let's open up BES4. Here's me a design that I have already. If I, I don't know if I have a USB stick in my computer, though. Let me find one of those bad boys <clears throat> and pop it in. So, if you're wanting to go straight to a USB stick here, all you need to do is go up to your application button, do a save as, go to the left side, say this PC, and choose your drive that you want to use. So here's the drive I'm going to use. I would name this Stippling. Somehow I've got my cap locks on. Change the file format from BRF to um, P Design, PES whatever version you want to go with and save it. Oh, I can too save there. You little snot. Let's try this one. Nobody's in there. Let's try that one. Nobody's in there. There we go. Okay. So, um, that's, that's how you do it. Then you safely eject your hardware and you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, add a machine to which software program, Priscilla? Uh, the P Design. If so, then I certainly can. And oh, thank you, Snowcap. Um, and by the way, those of you that have my um, workbook, we are going to do a live this week. Uh, I've been very remiss about that lately because I've been so jam packed. But this week I have a free some free time, and so. If you're in that group, if you have that workbook and you have joined that group, then we will be doing a live lesson this week. Um, <clears throat> how do I create? So, Priscilla, 
is are you talking p design wireless once you answer that one i'll come back to you uh let's see here no answer yet okay well i'm assuming you're saying p design so i'm going to do that and then i'll show you okay so p design so let's go over here and let's see here if you go actually if you go up to your options pull down menu and you choose options you can then go to network machine settings to add, you need to have your machine turned on and have touched the open screen so that it recognizes it and finds the internet okay and that it's on your same network then you choose the add button mine's going to show up with sewing machine one two three because that's the only one i think oh actually i must have both of them turned on nope i've only got one turned on so it should find something here in a minute That shouldn't be the number, but okay. So when I select okay, when I choose send, that should be there for me to go. Okay. So that is how it works. And it's that simple. Do I need to go back and do that again? Um, I'm sorry, Molly. Uh, you can try, maybe you can try on YouTube. By the way, guys, I really would like that YouTube channel to grow. So if you would go in and like it and follow that channel, I would love it. It would help me out massively. Um, yes, Cindy, if you haven't joined it already, you need to, to request to join. Make sure that you answer the questions and agree to the terms. Otherwise, I have to I'll reach back out to you. OK, so now let's go. I had a question about how to do an all over quilting design. Now she wanted to do it in P design. So I'm going to start there. Um, easier in BES4, just so we're clear on that, but we'll start, <clears throat> we'll start in P design. My preferred method is to create a motif stitch. And the reason I say that is because then I can make draw a line and make that motif stitch follow along it with it, or I can turn it into a stippling stitch and have the motif scattered along that stippling stitch. So my YouTube channel is Cynthia's Embroidery. So, and I, I actually am very trying very hard to grow that one. I just keep forgetting. I'm not, I'm the worst at self-promotion guys. That is one of the things. So let's see here. <clears throat> if I'm doing an all over stippling design and I'm in PE design, if I go to options and I go to the programmable stitch creator, this is my preferred place to create something. So I'm going to go file and we're going to choose new motif pattern. <clears throat> we're going to go to the view tab and we're going to open up a template because I like to have something to draw with. And I drew this. It, I made my artwork to where it would fit in here. It's, it's a small shamrock. Now, <clears throat> to resize your artwork to fit, you simply pull it out from the corners. I'm holding down my shift key so it resizes proportionately. And now we're ready to start playing. So <clears throat> when I click on the Home tab and I click on my Select Point tool, you'll notice I have a blue point and a red point. Guess what? <clears throat> we're going to, I have a frog in my throat that will not go away. <coughs> we're going to create our design out of that single line. Okay. So what you do is you click on the line to add a point. Then I usually click over to the right side and add another one and drag it where I want it to go. And simply go around the entire image. You can freehand this if you if you, if you don't have an image, you can try freehanding it, but I always find it if I can find an image file that's working, that's what I want, then that's what I'll go with. This one's out of a, a um, graphics company that I subscribe to, so I can use it. It's called Graphics Factory. And that's where I get a lot of my artwork is Graphics Factory. Because I will say I am not a freehand drawer. But you'll notice that this is a pretty easy way to go about this. 
and you're simply clicking to insert a point and then drag, click off. So you click an add and then let go and then click back on it and drag it where you want it to go. But you do have to click and let go. Otherwise it won't, if I click and try to, if I click and try to move it, see, it won't let me move it. So I click and let go. And I'm just following the shape of this design out of that single line. And you notice that I have a preview over on the right hand side. If you don't see your preview, go to your view, click on the preview button and it pops your preview up. So once I get back to the middle line here, this is where I will take one click down and then I will take this line and drag it all the way over to the beginning point. Okay. That way I know you can see that I have a line going across there and then I will come and start adding on the line that I, that I left. But that tells me you either have to go, unless you want a line running through the middle of your shamrock or your clover or whatever we're going to call this today, you need to go over one side twice. Otherwise, you're going to have a line. You can see my line stitching across there, and that's exactly what would stitch. So it's showing you what you're going to stitch. So if I come down through here and I keep clicking, <clears throat> I'm adding a point as I click and let go. So click, let go, drag it. Click, let go, click back on it and drag it down. And this is where I'm going with this one. So if I keep going, uh, I y'all get the concept. I'm going to come back and show you how to get those put together. But you'll notice I'm putting rounds. I'm putting them pretty close together because I want to make sure that it's curved, especially if I make it bigger, because this is a teeny tiny space. Just so we're clear on that. It's not a huge item. It can be made up to 100 millimeters, which is almost four inches. That's 3.94 inches. So if you want your motif to be 3.94 inches, you can certainly do that. If you do, you need to make sure that you have more edit nodes around the design. Now, the key is come back in on that second line that's going across the middle and take those points and put them back on top of another point. And if you have challenges with this, I'm going to show you how to clean that up in a minute. But you would do that all the way back up to this point right here. This one, this guy right here. So let's keep, y'all need me to keep continue on this vein or are we good to go? If we need it, I can sit here and futz with these all day long. I am that person. So <clears throat> let's take, oops. That was one that I forgot to click off of. So you'll notice I'm getting them as close as I can get them when I drop them, but like that one, I didn't get it right in the right spot. So if I come and click on that point, if I want to get it in the right spots, I can take my arrow keys on my keyboard and notice how as I hit that arrow key, how it nudges over on top of it. That gets it right in the right spot. So now that's you don't no longer see a shadow. So let's grab this one and take it and put it. I've got a little bit of a shadow, so I probably need to go down a little bit. Let's go. Oh, you can see you can see when you're off of it. So that's pretty darn close. Let's do this one. Let's nudge it in and back up. All right. So I got people telling me that yes, they're good. No, keep keep playing. So I'm going to keep playing here. But I've shown you how to nudge them into place, and we're simply going all the way around this and back to the beginning. I know that some people are faster learners than others, so I try to keep everybody entertained here. Sometimes this is what like watching paint dry, though, and I understand that as well. Have you ever tried to talk while you're doing this? <laughs> and concentrating solely on it. But seriously, guys, you're just simply clicking and adding a point. Click it, let go, bring it, drag it down. Click to add your point, let go, bring it, and drag it down. And I'm going to pull this back into the center so that I'm not fighting it along the line. So I added a little point and I can tell that one's off as I'm working. So I'm going to nudge it in while I'm there. That's perfect. And I'm darn close on all of them, but some of them, some of them I'm better at than others. So 
that's when I would go back in and use my arrow keys and nudge them in. So if you see darker, when you're playing with it, if you see a darker point, a, a dark shadow around it, or kind of a double here, then you know that you need to nudge that one back into place. Because otherwise your line will be slightly off on the second pass. Doesn't have to be totally perfect, but you want it close. And now we are back at the beginning, which is back at the, the point that I need to, to finish. And you'll notice I am all the way around. I do not have a line in the middle. And now I would go in and clean up those, those edit nodes. So I would come in and grab my edit point tool, just click on it and use my arrows to nudge them in. And if you go too far one way or the other, you'll see it show you a shadow. So that's how it works. Now, <clears throat> We're going to go file, save as, and we're going to save this as a clover two. So, um, Gracie Lou, no ma'am, that's not for a double run. It's just to make sure that it will go from one side of this to the other without having a line in the middle. And the only way that to, to do that is to make it either top heavy or bottom heavy. So you, you have to go over one or the other twice. Okay. So now I've saved it and I'm ready to use it. Let's go back over to our layout and editing screen. And I'm going to press new page and get rid of that. I'm not going to save my changes to my police hat. By the way, save your hat as a different name. Okay. Now, if you want to use this as a stippling stitch, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab my rectangle drawing tool and I'm going to change from a fill stitch to a stippling stitch. And I'm going to turn off my outline stitch. We're going to change it to not sewn. And let's draw ourselves a rectangle here in our square, in our hoop. I think I have the largest hoop selected. So I, if I just wanted to stipple, there I go. But I want to do this a little bit more fancy. So I'm going to change my spacing to 25 millimeters. So it's spaced out quite a bit. And down here, you see this little key. I'm on my sewing attributes tab on the right hand side. You see this little button called use motif, put a check mark there. Now, if I click here, this will bring up my motifs. Here's my A, well, evidently I couldn't type clover. There's my A clover two. We'll click OK. There's my clover going around, but let's make it, let's make it bigger. So I want it bigger. I'm going to make it about 15 and let's see what that does for us and i want to space them apart so i'm going to space them apart about 25 millimeters now it's just kind of tossing them randomly in there instead of having them all repeating right at the same time you can go looser with your stippling you can make your clover bigger so let's make this one 20 and see what if we like it so now i've got a bigger clover and if you want, you can change your spacing of your stippling to make it even looser or you can tighten it down. It, that's up to you. I think the looser you go, the better that it tends to put these in. You can also play with how it arranges them over here. You've got horizontal, so you can turn them upside down. You can alternate them. You can have them facing each other. So depending on what options you choose will depend on what your stippling looks like. And those that's fun to do, in my opinion. Uh, so that's that is an easy way to get an all over quilting design ready for your hoop. OK, um, without you trying to without any tie offs in the middle of it and without you trying to figure out where something's starting and where st something's stopping. OK, so that one's a really super simple way to do that. Um, it, the design does kind of have to lend itself to that. For instance, that was a curved design and it had a curved end. If it's very angular, it doesn't show, it doesn't do as well. So let me kind of show you what I mean. There are some built-in ones that don't work very well that I can show you. So if I come back in here and I come in and I grab something, let's see here. Let's say we did the tree. Notice how that's angular doesn't look that well doesn't look that good so you really want to make sure 
one of the things I'll show you is you'll notice I had my shamrock cent centered. You, and you can see that this design starts at the bottom. So that's it. That's the difference. This is where it's line to line is. That would make a difference. Um, you're not going to have as smooth of a go of it. So let's see. Come on. Um, let me see. Where's another one that's kind of funky? That one would be a little weird. Oh, actually, that one's kind of cool. I didn't think it would look very good, but that one's kind of cool. And you can change its size as well. So let's make it 25 millimeters. Uh, that's a little bit big for that. So let's go down a little bit. Or I can space them out further. And let's make let's space them out a little bit further. So you can get a whole lot of different stuff there just by playing with that. Oops. Just by playing with the spacing, with how big you have the design. Um, and there's quite a, you know, there's quite a few, there's like 89 motifs that are built in, plus you can create your own. So you can really have fun with that. Um, I can see doing a thread spool, but you would want, the key is that, you know, that the curves, you've got to make it to where it's going to go and you've got to have it make it, it's like drawing out of one piece of string is how I kind of explain it. You have to make it go all the way around and come in one side and out the other. So the red is where it starts and the green is where it stops, or sorry, backwards. Blue is where it starts, green is, or red is where it stops, so backwards. All right, um, now, the stippling design that I created in BES4 was pretty cool, and I'm gonna, this, is, this one involves Canvas Workspace. You don't have to do it with Canvas Workspace, but if you don't have, um, well, this one requires Power Pack too, so, but it, it was pretty slick, um, and I'm gonna show you how I started. So we're going to go to Canvas Workspace. Let me find my Canvas Workspace here. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to do File and New. And I'm not going to save it. So what I did was I downloaded an image. So I'm going to go to my Image Trace key right here. And I can choose an image from the computer. And I chose my big shamrock, the big honking one that I got. And I had it do trace outer edge only because that's all I needed. And I said, okay. Then I grabbed this whole kit and caboodle and I shrunk it down. Way, way down. And then I went into my layers menu and I basically deleted the image file from the beginning. The image file. So now I'm left with this guy right here. And I decided, okay, we do have a fill page tool. So if I right mouse click on this, oops, right mouse click on it, I can say fill page. There you go. But I don't need that many. So I ended up taking out quite a few. But that gave me a little bit of a scatter arrangement. And then I just kind of manipulated these around. And I don't need that one. So let's delete it. And then I said, okay, well, let's flip a few and let's rotate a few. So we have a little bit of variety here and I don't need things right in the corners. So I flipped and I mirrored and I rotated and I played that way. So let's, let's mirror this. Mirror that one. Okay. So this is my basic design that I started with. And then I went up here and I said, file, export transfer FCM file. And I exported that. So I'm going to say, we're going to call this Clover 2. And we'll save that down here. And it's saving it as an FCM file on my computer. At this point, everybody good with me so far? I went into my BES software. So this is where you, things become, become a little bit more challenging, but not terribly. So I'm going to select all items and I'm going to delete that. Actually, let's undo that. We'll just start a new page. So you can see where I wanted to come. I selected the hoop that I wanted to use first. So hoop, select hoop, and I chose the biggest hoop that I have. Okay. Now, 
go up to your application button. And since I have Power Pack 2, when I go to import, I, sh I have import artwork. Okay. Now I'm going to go find my Clover 2. And here it is. And open that up. So now I have myself some artwork to play with. And I can still, once again, I can still move these individually and play with them all I want to where they kind of fill my hoop. Now, the next part, you kind of have to be able to draw a little bit. You can futz with it and make it better, but you do have to be able to draw a little bit. The first thing I did was I made myself a guideline. You could turn on a grid, but a grid is distracting to me. So what I did was I clicked on the upper page ruler and I just simply drug down to the zero mark that's midway in my hoop. And that's where I'm going to start drawing my drawing my lines to to connect. So now we're ready to get going. Go to your tools tab and grab your artwork tool. I'm going to go with the line tool because it's the easiest one to use. If you need a curve when you're using the line tool, you hold down the control key on your keyboard. That lets you make curved points. So that's the easiest one I think people for people to use, and that's the one we're going to go with. So what I did was I decided where I'm going to start, which is at that center line, and I simply clicked. Actually, I want it, backspace takes away your last click. I want some curves, so let's see here. And I click to the next point and then right mouse click to finish that line segment. Don't worry, we're going to connect it all up again here in a minute. But we're right now we're just going to go from one to the other and can, we'll worry about making sure things are in the right spot in a minute. And I made myself some stippling. So I'm going to come and click right there and then right mouse click away from it. Come grab that artwork tool again. And we're going to left click. And I'm using my control key to be able to do the curves. And then right click. Grab that artwork tool again. And then this time we're going to pull it out of here. Right click and grab that artwork tool again. And this time I'm going to go around and about over here so that I cover more space of my hoop. And I am holding my control key down this entire time. Right click. And let's go from there to the other one. And then we're going to click right up next to it. Right click. And then let's we got to grab one more and finish it up. I guess I should have grabbed that one along the way. I may come back and change that, but we'll make this work. So because of, because of the way that I want this to finish. I kind of want it to finish on a lot with a curve going this way. So we'll make it we'll make it work. and left click and then right click. And now we've got all of our little lines to go. Now, mine are not perfect. I would probably futz with this a little bit more because if you look over here, I'm a little bit more random there, but I'm, I'm doing this under pressure. <laughs> so we're going to come home and we're going to zoom in right here on these segments. Key is you want to make sure that things are touching. So if I grab that line right there, I need to grab my edit shape tool and make sure that it touches. So I'm going to grab that and move it to where it touches. And we're going to go to the other side of that one. And let's zoom in. This one needs to touch here. And it's, you want it right on top of that line. You don't want it inside it. You want it right on top. So we're going to look at each of our little points and make sure that, see, that one's not touching. I want it to touch. And I'm just using the scroll wheel on my computer to go around. Scroll takes me out of my zoom. So if I know I want to look at that side, let's look over here. That one's not touching, so I needed to make it touch again. Let's scroll down. Oh, I missed one. So let's add a line. 
Actually, let's split this line. Put that there, and then we're going to bring this one. I, I missed at touching one, so let's pop that guy there and move him right here. So these are called your little Bezier tools, and you can futz and play with those all you want. So let me make sure I'm touching. This is, takes a little bit of thought process. You just have to make, the, and I'll show you why I'm saying you need to make sure you're touching here in just a few minutes, because I'm going to make sure I leave one untouched so you can see what happens if they're not. Let's keep going and see what else we can do. Scroll down. That one looks like it's good. That's good. Let me zoom out. Let's look down here at this bottom right corner and see what we've got going on there. I'm a little bit too far in there, so let's grab that Edit Shape tool and click back on that one. Touch it. Do the same thing here. And I have made myself quick shortcuts there so that I can come in and not do this on pages where I don't have to go back to the home tab every time. So I made myself a shortcut on my quick access toolbar for my zoom tools. That makes life a little bit more simple. Let's go zoom to fit and let's check that top one. I said I was going to leave one untouching on purpose, so we'll leave that one untouched. Remind me where I left it. Okay, so now we want to select everything that we've got there. We're ready to rock and roll now. Oops, I hit something. We're going to go to our range tab and we're going to say, because I have Power Pack 2, I have artwork tools. So I am going to say combine. When now I can go to my tools tab and with power pack one, I have convert to run and look there. Oh, wow. So remember, I told you I have one that's not touching. Since it wasn't touching, it created a jump stitch. So we need to undo twice. And now let's go back to my select tool and select this little line right here. Edit shape tool and come in and make that touch. So now I want to, and since I want this to touch, okay, we're going to change, we're going to change this line right here. Because I changed where that one went, I want to change the way this one goes. So I want this one to come off the bottom and wrap its way up top. So we're going to click And right click away and now let's make sure that one's touching and it's not so i need to come in and pop that guy right on top of there now we're ready to rock and roll so let's go all items arrange and combine now when i zoom out and we go to our tools tab we can now convert it to run and i have an all over quilting design with no jumps that is what the awesome part of that is. No jump stitches. No, you're not going to have to tell it how. Basically, the way I put it in there is the way it will it will go. So if I tried to do that in P design, I might have tie offs at every section unless I change my entry and exit points. There is one last thing that I would do. Let me show you what that is. So if I come over here to my BES4 and I go to my edit shape tool, do you see this little red point here? I would take that and it's actually going to be my green point. That's my start spot. And then I would take this one, take it over to here. That's my stop spot. Now, when you go to stitch it, it will go the direction that we need it to go. It is a running stitch and it is perfectly path for you. You don't have to think about it because we combined everything. Which means it's going to do its thing and do it correctly for you. Okay. How cool is that? The last thing that I check usually, and I do this before I um, convert it to stitches. So let me stop my simulator. Usually I will take this and I'll copy it. So I'm holding my control key down to copy it to make sure that those two line up. And if I come over here and I look and I zoom in, 
that would be pretty good. So I could live with that. I could live with connecting like that. I might make that one a little bit less of a sharp turn. So what I could do there and to make it less of a sharp turn, let's go back to our tools and our edit shape because we created this one. We can come in and modify that a little bit so I can take that and move it. And let's add a point to where that's not as severe and then right mouse click and looky there. So now it's not going to be as sharp of a drop and look there. That looks so much better when you're trying to connect it. So um, that's the way I would do it. I mean, that's um, I, I love that feature in BES4. And that's why I say, would I buy BES Blue over BES4? No, because I the BES Four allows you to have those power packs. Okay. So that I will say it's a whole lot easier to do it in BES4, what I just did, than it is to do that one in PE Design, simply because I have the artwork tools. So um, just keep that in mind. I mean, that's that's one of those things that I would tell you. Okay, guys, let me see if there's anything that I forgot to answer today. Um So, nope, evidently I, I have answered everything and I did it in an hour and six minutes. Woohoo! Let me go up here and look and see what else we've got. Glad you loved this lesson, Sharon. Um, for, so, Sharon, I, I will see you, I guess, Thursday. So, for those of you in my, in my Lettering So Easy group, you have to have the workbook to be in that group. Otherwise, I don't admit you um, because that's part of your purchase price. Um, Glad you enjoyed it. So let's see here. What else have we got? And I'm going to put in a coupon code for BES4 today. I don't have enough books on hand for P Design to do that, but let me see. I do not have, um, I, you'll have to give me till after the show is over for me to actually make this one active. So this is your coupon code today for the BES4 workbook. It's called Lettering So Easy. There's your coupon code. So you all know that um, I get, obviously I get what I'm teaching you off of your questions that you send in. So keep those questions coming. Today was a good day on um, for questions because you all asked excellent questions today. So well, have fun at your quilt show, Margaret. So you are most welcome. Uh, what is BES4? It is a program that Brother offers that is a customizing program, but it has so much in it that is so much fun to do. Do you need all of the power packs? Depends on what you want to do. I would start with power pack one is very powerful. That's the one I would start with um, when you're adding I like that one because you it's not like they're cumulative. So if you get power pack one, say let's say you buy power pack two instead, you don't get the features in power pack one. You have to buy each of the power packs. If there's one I would hold off on, that would probably be power pack three simply because it's templates. Um, drawing and scanning on the Luminaire, you can do that. You're not going to get it. It's not going to be quite as clean, Edna. Um, it, there are, you can do that. And I know I've done a show on Brother Sews on that. I know I have, but um, I don't remember when that was. I'd have to go back and look at that. Um, I think it was sometime last year because uh, I'm pretty sure I did it on the 10 needle doing custom quilting designs. You still need to get that artwork somewhere. So, um, Shirley, I have used all power packs today and I have used P design. I have used BES four and I have used canvas workspace. So I've hit them all today, a large one. Um, so I, I actually, Edna, if you have one of the software programs, you'll find it easier to do it than it is on the luminaire to do that, to make them connected. Um, yes, Delia, um, it B, BES four is different from P design. P design is a full digitizing program that allows you to create your own embroidery designs from scratch. BES4 allows you to um, manipulate things that you have. But when you add power packs, you get some extra features in it. So it does become a lighter digitizing program. But that combined artwork tool, I wish I had it in P Design. I don't. 
And so th when I saw that today, I'm like, oh, I bet this will work. And so sure enough, it did. Um, well, because Tracy, when it's converting it into nodes, um, it's, it's however it's reading that path. So it, it just is the way that, that it brings it in. So you're going to have a gazillion nodes because it's stitches. It is all of the stitches. So when it comes in from the dream machine, it's coming in in stitch format. So let me show you an example of what I mean. Let me open up that police design again. And I can show you what it would look like here. Let's see. Okay, so here's that police design. And this is in stitch view. When I go to the select point tool and click on it, there are a gazillion nodes there because it's every single stitch that's there. Okay, that is what you are seeing. Um, Shirley, I used both power packs for the quilting. I used the artwork power pack two to combine the artwork to create the artwork and combine it and then i used power pack one to convert it to runs now there is a workaround you could probably convert it to an applique let's see hold on let me see uh, there's all there sometimes where there's a will there's a way so hold on a second let's see let me bring that design back up here let me delete that one so if instead let me undo actually i want to leave that so let me convert it to an applique and then change the applique type to a run and apply and then preserve it as stitches and then get rid of the first two pieces so it could be done with power pack two. Let's see. Oh, lots more jumps though. Lots more jumps. Power pack two kept those jumps away. Um, so just it, it easier when you have both power packs. Yes, either one of them will work with your machine. Either one. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to create your own from scratch or do you want to just customize what you have? By customizing, I mean add letter to it, whatever. Um, oh, spiral text was the question I didn't answer. What was, what was that in? Let me go back up to the top. If you'll elaborate on the spiral text question, I'm looking. I'm hunting. Sorry. That's way up to the beginning. I, I got off. Let's see here. I'll put that down for next week. Okay. I'll, I promise I'll get to it next week. It's going to be the top of my list. Just let me know whether it was in P design or in BES for, for your spiral text. Okay. I promise I'll, I'll get to it next week. All right, guys, if there's nothing else, then I'm going to say good evening. You all have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you um, next week, next Tuesday. And for those of you in my Lettering So Easy group, I will see you on Thursday. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh... Now, Tracy... That, that's just the way it comes in. You could convert it to blocks, but that's just the way it comes in. Okay. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.